Bruce Oops. Pearl's been coaching 18 years, D1 level, 11 appearances, three-time SEC Coach of the Year. Big personality in a sport. Uh, oh, I haven't talked to him in years, but a lot of fun. Well, first of all, congratulations. You've had great success at Auburn, which we could, you know we view some of these schools as football schools, and you've made Auburn a basketball school, so you're winning a bunch of games. <laughs> I mean, you really are, and I'm watching you at the College World Series Baseball, and I'll get to that. But I want to start because Jabari Smith, I said this. If I have one pick in the draft like Orlando, I'm going to take Jaden Ivey or Jabari. If I'm OKC and I got four, I may roll the dice on Chet Holmgren. I don't know about the body type. So let's talk about your guy, Jabari Smith. When did you – because you have a history of developing guys and recruiting, but developing as well as recruiting. Some guys recruit. You and Nick Saban recruit, but you can develop. When did you know, wow, this is a this is a lottery pick player? Great to be with you, Colin. Um, I think I knew right around Thanksgiving when we played in the uh, Battle for Atlantis. We had three games in a row, UConn, Loyola, and Syracuse. And he just kept, and get, he kept and getting better. And he wasn't afraid of the moment, and he never acted or behaved like a freshman. And UConn tried to, you know, punk him a little bit. You know, this young... 198 pound kid. Let's see what he's got. And, and you just best not poke the bear because he's not afraid of the moment. And, uh, and I, I think he, he's the first NBA all-star that I've coached. I had Tobias Harris at Tennessee and I knew, I knew Tobias was going to be a great longtime NBA player who had a chance to approach an all-star level. This kid's this kid's an all star, Bruce. What what is? Um, give me a comp. Uh, uh, you know, we can watch video, and I saw him playing college like everybody else. Give me a comp. Well, I mean, a comp's got to be Durant. It's got to be because of his ability to shoot the ball, his jump shoot, and he, and he, and he's got a high release point. He's six, every bit of six ten, and he can make open ones and he can make contested ones, and he's absolutely not afraid of the moment. Uh, you know, the 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 secret sauce to Jabari is his competitiveness. Yeah. Like, Cone, he doesn't want to lose at anything. Like, he's going to win sprints. He's going to win a free throw contest, three-point shooting contest. He's going to win at ping pong. And if he doesn't win, he's pissed. And he, <laughs> and he affects everybody else that he's with. That's all he cares about is getting better, being a great teammate, and, and winning championships. Orlando's got pieces, but they haven't figured – they got no glue, and they haven't figured out, you know, how to win. I, and I think a kid like this – could make a huge difference for them. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's funny. I want to talk about Chet Holmgren for a second. So I was thinking about this. The body type, you know, you've had a, you've recruited a million body types. And there are these Porzingis, Brandon Ingram, Chet Holmgren, but their history is getting um, injured. And I've always had this theory is that college basketball is about 36 to 40 games and regional travel. NBA is 82 games, national travel. And that NBA staffs make a mistake. That I would go in with a Chet Holmgren, and I would say he's going to play 50 games, and he's not going to play more than 11 minutes a half, and we're going to let that that boy body become a man body. Now, that may sound crazy for me, but Chet Holmgren, I would limit the number of games immediately because when do guys get hurt, Bruce? When they're fatigued. It's the last run of right. skiing. So your thoughts on Chet Holmgren and, and kind of what you see when you – because he's not your player, but you've seen a lot of tape. Coach, you should take that exact approach. That's, whether that's general manager, talk or coach talk. Jabari Smith played 29 minutes a game, not 40, not 35. There are only so many miles in that tire. I want him fresh at the end of a half, at the end of a game, and I wasn't going to wear him out. So I think your approach is not only right for Chet, I think it's right for, you know, for all athletes. We want to be sort of peaking at the end of a game, at the end of a half, at the end of a season. You know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a Sean Bradley effect. I mean, there was nothing wrong with Sean Bradley. He was a great player, but you go knee to knee, you know, with with an NBA man, and I, you know, I don't, you just don't know. And I thought your analogy of look when you got three or four picks, hey, take a chance on something that you know could wind up being great. But also, if you've only got one or two picks, you know, he does because of the body type, obviously, have some risk, you know, for injury. And so, uh, you know, I, I think you got to go. You got to go with, with what's proven, not not what's potential. Do you worry for Jabari Smith and some of these kids? They're nineteen. They go to the pros. <sighs> They're staying in the hotel. I always joke they couldn't go have a glass of wine at the hotel. They're nineteen. What have you told Jamar Jabari about the growth? Yeah. He's going to play with men. There's going to be. Uh, yeah. He's going to have to have a financial advisor. 
How do you uh, groove a young man like Jabari, Bruce? Yeah, this is another reason why, why, you, why you take him and you trust him. First of all, look at his pedigree. His dad was a bad man. His dad was a big, tough, physical, dirty, offensively gifted dude. Gentle giant, but a tough guy, all right? Mom, beautiful Christian academic woman that raised her son to be a gentleman. So he's got the combination of the toughness and the sweetness that, that you'd want, you know, in every son. So he's not going to be affected. He's not going to be affected like everybody by the lounge lizards. He just isn't. <laughs> he, 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 he's trying to be a pro. He's trying to be an NBA all-star. He'll look at that distraction and say, that's not going to help me win championships. I know that may be, you know, a pretty special, you know, 20 minutes, but it's not going to win a championship. And that's what this kid's all about. That's his DNA. That's nothing that Coach Pearl taught him or, or said to him. That's what his, that's what his obsession is. And he also recognizes that he's got to be a role model. Like if you're the number one pick, they're, they're going to, even though you're young, they're going to follow you and they know what you're making. And so I think he'll accept that responsibility. He's got a tight camp around him. It's all family. I, I don't think, uh, I don't think anybody's going to get in and distract him. I don't think success will change him. I've been saying this for years, that the NBA demonizes and marginalizes college basketball. If I had a son, I'd send him to college basketball. It's a marketing platform. He's going to get better coaching there than the G League. He gets great training staffs. And he's going to be forced to be in a college campus with international students, math students that are going to challenge him. I just love college basketball. I do understand that you're not going to stay there long if you're as good as Jabari Smith. But I did feel in the last year, America still loves March Madness. The ratings were fantastic. The stories were unbelievable. And maybe it's not as talented as 15 years ago, but I kind of feel like the tide's turning. And we are seeing these kids that go to college, and they come out, and they love the college. And they miss college. Do you you sense, I think we went through a 10-year period, all I heard was college basketball's bad. Bad for these young players. You know, it's funny now with NIL, Bruce, they can make a little money in college and get the coaching and get the college experience. Your thoughts? No, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, if you want your 18-year-old son to be the breadwinner right away for your family, go ahead. Put him in the G League if that's, if that's, what, that's what it's all about. I'd rather have him be 18. And you know what? Jabari said, I want to go to college, and I want to be a freshman, and I want to be in the jungle at Auburn, and I want to have, I don't want to go to football games and sit in the front row. I want to get to know SUNY Lee, who's a gold medalist at Auburn and a gymnast here and, and kind of go to her meets and support her. Um, and it's not, and you know what? And I want to get better. And when my game's right, the NBA is going to tell me my game is right. There are two things that to, to, to be specific on. One, when the NCAA changed the rules and they allowed us as coaches to work with the kids in the summertime in the off season, that was a good rule change because there was a time when we couldn't even touch them in the off season. And so the European players were getting better as far as their skill levels. Yeah. And the professional coaches were all complaining about the fact that we didn't know what they were doing. You know what? You don't know what I'm doing? Put me on a schedule. Okay? I'll beat your ass. Okay? <laughs> we know how to develop players. We know how to develop 18-year-olds. We know how to develop 19-year-olds. Now, I may not be as good coaching men, but you're not as good coaching boys. And that's who they still are. They may look like they're men, but they're not. You know, Jamari wanted to, he wanted to be a freshman. And I agree with you, Colin. I think that we're seeing that. The NIL, it will help a little bit. Yeah. It'll, it, 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 like the kid Baycott at North Carolina, he got to go, he got a chance to win a natty next year. He's going to work on that perimeter defense and that perimeter offense. He wasn't forced to go. If the, if, if the, if the advisory committee said, look, right now, even though you were, you might have been the best center in college basketball on both ends and you took North Carolina as far as you did, but you're looking like you're going to be in the middle of the second round. Okay. I'll take your word for it. I'm going to go back to school. Work on a few of those primitive things, make a little bit of money, and have another great year, and not have to not have to earn earn, earn the bread for the family when he's eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, what a pleasure to see you again, Bruce Pearl. Great for college basketball. I see you at those Auburn baseball games. Now you're a baseball school. It was a football school. Now it's a basketball school. Now it's a baseball school. You you look like you're having the time of your life, Colin. We're we're in everything school, and I you know I believe in I be, I believe in the ministry of coaching. I, I believe in. And, and the work that can be done on a college campus. I, I'm not proud of, of what we're doing in this country universally on college campuses. I wish we could have diversity of thought and exchange different ideas and disagree, agree to disagree about different things and challenge. Uh, and you know what? Pray before our meals every now and then and teach these kids to love our country a little bit more than what we do. I think that's what we do at Auburn. 
And I think this has been a, an environment we've been able to train guys to go out there and be great. And I appreciate having a platform to be able to share that with you today. Jabari Smith, Bruce Pearl, can't wait for the draft tomorrow, my friend. It is great to see you. Uh, you're good for the sport. You're great for Auburn. And thanks for coming on our show. Colin, you guys are the best. Appreciate you. All right, Bruce Pearl. Yeah, I think Jabari Smith would be, uh, if I had the number one pick, I feel he's certain. I, Jaden Ivey and him, I know they're going to be successful NBA players. You know what I loved about that whole thing? The competitive thing. Like, I, I say this all the time to my kids. Are you willing to compete? Because somebody, if you're really, if you're smart as you think you are, you're going to get a good job. Somebody's going to want it. Are you willing to compete? When he told me, this kid competes at everything. Like, that almost guarantees success. You don't have to be the tallest, the fastest. Are you willing to just get back in that thing? Does it bother you to lose? That's the story of Brady and Russell Wilson. It's not size, arm strength. No. Those guys like to compete. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.